everyone and welcome to Serpente Sunday for April 30th, 2023. I'm Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Animal Sanctuary and with the help of our Python Regis Luma, this week I want to share with you something very important for your snake or other animals that may be in quarantine, isolation, or who may be restricted due to medical or other reasons. Being in isolation or quarantine does not mean your snake must be deprived of opportunities to express species typical behaviors or that they cannot be provided with enrichment opportunities. Luma, for example, is being filmed here in an isolation room. To the best of our knowledge, she is an asymptomatic carrier of nidovirus or serpentovirus. We think she is about five years old and she came to our animal sanctuary on November 12, 2022. Her veterinary exam went really well and she was given a clean bill of health. However, routine virus testing indicated that she was positive for nidovirus. She was subsequently tested twice more and those tests were negative. However, false negatives are much more common than a false positive. False positives are unlikely. Luma is going to be tested again so that we can have the sample sent to the University of Florida where they can perform genome sequencing on the virus and let us know exactly which strain of NIDO she is carrying and how pathogenic it is likely to be. Luma has never been sick, but she must remain in isolation. But just because she has to remain in isolation doesn't mean that she has to be deprived. She has enclosure furnishings that are relatively easy for me to clean while at the same time allowing her to express natural behaviors and have environmental stimulation. She also has her very own exercise tent with enrichment items that only she uses. Any enrichment items she has are easy to clean and permanently assigned to her for use and we rotate them so she doesn't get bored with one particular thing. We also give her new enrichment items that can be disposed of entirely after use, like cardboard boxes and tubes or crumpled up paper. You can easily manage snakes in quarantine the same way, keeping things simple at first and adding complexity as you eliminate potential issues. For example, once a week or two has gone by with no signs of mites and you've had an opportunity to assess urates and feces and collect a fecal sample, you can do away with paper substrate and add regular substrate. Once you know the fecal check is normal, the snake is eating and not regurgitating someplace in the enclosure, you can add more substrate or a moss box and more items to clutter up the space. You can use items that are still easy to clean in case the virus panel or bacterial cultures that you have done during the wellness exam come back positive for something, but plastics and PVC or metal are non-porous and can be easily disinfected. You can use cardboard and then simply throw it away and replace it periodically. These soft-sided crates and exercise pens are designed for easy cleaning so they can get wet and you can scrub them with disinfectant. Parts of them can even be unzipped and removed completely so that you can throw them in the washing machine. You can also use giant cardboard boxes as play pens under supervision if you can't secure the lids and keep the snake from getting out, and then just dispose of them afterwards. Environmental stimulation and enrichment provide opportunities for your snake to engage in mental and physical exercise and these things are an outlet to express species typical as well as novel behaviors in a healthy manner. This reduces or eliminates maladaptive behavior from developing, reduces or eliminates stereotypies from developing, and all of these things can happen as a result of captivity stress, which by providing enrichment and environmental stimulation, we are trying to mitigate. Mental stimulation, physical exercise, and enrichment have repeatedly been shown to improve cognition and physical fitness, build resilience and healthy stress coping, reduce fear learning, and enhance overall well-being. Quarantine is not synonymous with deprivation. Do what you can for your snake that's in isolation or quarantine to provide them with optimal welfare, and this means opportunities for stimulation and the ability to express species typical or natural behaviors 
as well as opportunities to engage in novel behaviors because they are under captive management. Make sure you're working closely with your veterinarian to provide safe, appropriate enrichment opportunities and a stimulating habitat while still maintaining biosecurity, health, and safety. The clips you've been watching have been filmed on different days and at different times. Some of these have been early evening when it's still light outside, and some of these have been at night with just some dim room lighting as Luma comes out to explore. But I thought I would point out a few things as you're watching. Luma does shift herself in and out of her habitat. And so this is a clear indication that she does not choose to remain in her habitat. She's often at the door wanting out. She's a very active and inquisitive snake. So it really is a shame that she has to remain in this isolation room and she can't go out and do other things. But it doesn't mean that she has to be bored. So I often set this exercise tent up outside of her habitat. I open the door and I let her go in and out as she pleases. And she does this fairly often. I try to change up the items in the tent so that they're new and different and she just doesn't get bored with them. And I usually keep the items inside her enclosure the same, but I give her plenty to do in there. All at the same time, these things are fairly easy for me to clean. There is a window in the room, so she has exposure to natural light from outside, but we also have UVB and a halogen light and a deep heat projector for her in the enclosure. Now I want to point out that in the enclosure we have real substrate and we have a real rock and then I have something made of wood. Those are things that are porous and I also have a net for her to climb on. Those were added after we knew the results of her virus testing, after she'd had a fecal check and after she'd been observed for a couple of weeks and I knew exactly what we were dealing with and I wasn't worried about having porous things in there. Um, the rock can be soaked easily in hydrogen peroxide or another disinfectant. And the other things can simply be thrown away if they become too dirty or if we don't have Luma anymore. I certainly wouldn't use porous things with another snake. But as long as she is here, she can use these things. You're probably wondering what that wooden box is in there. And I'm going to show you that in just a minute. It's something that I created to put her humid hide in that allows her not only some extra ledges and things to interact with, but a space underneath her humid hide to get into. Now you might notice that she's not going directly in the tent and sometimes she doesn't. I think that she would rather be loose in the room at large, but I don't allow her to do that. Um, just because we know her status as a carrier of NIDO and also we have cats in this room that are in isolation. So we have um, cats in this room that are also carrying a virus that is contagious to other cats. However, they are unsymptomatic, asymptomatic. They're not sick, but we can't let them around our other cats. So when I say this is an isolation room, it is an isolation room. So we have cats in isolation and we have Luma in isolation. So this is the box I was telling you about. And it's just screwed together. It's just a box and it fits her humid hide exactly, but it leaves a space underneath that is large enough for her to get in and hide in. And I don't have substrate under there in case she wants a space that is smooth and she doesn't necessarily always want to lay in substrate. So I stuck the camera underneath so that you can see that. And I do find her under here quite a bit. So she uses that space. She uses her humid hide, but she also lays on top of all this or beside it sometimes so that she is directly in the heat or so that she can directly bask. And when she is directly basking, you'll see that she lays actually on top of the humid hide. Now there's a cardboard box I have in there that can easily be thrown away when we're done with it. And I'll just leave you with some scenes of Luma soaking up some rays. I hope you found this helpful. And until next time, please remember to always be kind and love your animals. 